Hey, it's Rob Fitzgerald again. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we're going to talk about iron, uh, both overload and deficiencies. We're going to talk about B12 and folate disorders. Um, and the reason I lump these together is because all of them have a fairly significant effect on our red blood cell parameters. Um, so we'll talk about what is iron. And, and iron, really, we're not talking about iron bound to hemoglobin. We're talking about iron bound to transferrin. So transferrin is the binding protein that iron uh, binds to in circulation. Um, and in that form it is, is in iron 3. So iron 3 bound to transferrin, when we talk about a serum iron, that's what we're talking about. Um, people talk about apotransferrin, that's basically the part of transferrin that doesn't have any iron bound to it. Um, we also call that um, unsaturated iron binding capacity. Uh, UBIC. Typically, the saturation of, of, of transferrin um, is also important, and, and it's somewhere in the 20 to 50 percent range. If you exceed 50, you know, if you're in the 60, 70 range, you probably have hemochromatosis. That's iron overload um, with tissue damage. And so, percent saturation is, is typically in the 20 to 50 percent range. Um, so transferrin, we talk about transferrin, and we also talk about TIBC. And, and really, TIBC is determined by transferrin. And if you know transferrin, you can calculate TIBC. And if you know TIBC, you can calculate transferrin. So we typically measure either transferrin or we measure total iron binding capacity. Um, and so this is what a normal person looks like, about 20% saturation, a normal TIBC, and a normal serum iron. Um, in iron deficiency, um, it's fairly common um, in toddlers, they're just not getting enough iron in their diet. Um, men, about 2%, typically due to, to blood loss. Um, women, especially menstruating women, maybe 11% of the women have, have iron deficiency. So a very common kind of a diagnosis and, and fairly easily made by looking at the, the lab parameters appropriately. Women, um, they've lost a lot of iron um, uh, in the developing fetus. Um, and as we said, causes ch children is typically dietary. Um, in adults, it's generally chronic blood loss. Um, and obviously, that's why it makes more sense that women um, have lower irons um, than men. So the hallmark characteristic in a red cell uh, if you measure red cells, is going to be a change in the MCV. So that's the mean corpuscular volume. We talk about this as being microcytic anemia. And essentially, these are very small red cells, um, and you don't have enough of them. So they're small, and you don't have enough of them. That defines microcytic anemia. And the lab parameter there is, is MCV, or mean corpuscular volume. How big are the red cells? In this case, they're small. And so other labs, your iron is going to be low. That makes sense. You're iron deficient. Um, your ferritin, probably our most sensitive indicator of iron, is typically going to be low. Hematocrit hemoglobin and red cell counts are also low. That's defined by anemia. Um, TIBC goes up in iron deficiency. So that's a, so a really sort of a hallmark characteristic would be microcytosis, low iron, increased TIBC. That's pretty much screaming iron deficiency. Um, in an iron overload, um, less frequent than um, iron deficiency. Um, uh, in this case, uh, serum iron is going to be high, iron saturation is going to be high, and ferritin is going to be high. Um, and in this case, the opposite happens to your transferrin. Your transferrin actually goes down. And so I like to think of it as, you know, if you're iron deficient, your body upregulates transferrin so it can capture any iron that's around. If you're overloaded, your body downregulates transferrin so that you don't store too much iron. Um, that's a fairly simplistic view, but it, it's, it, it'll help you interpret the labs correctly. Um, so iron overload, there's either hemosiderosis, that's iron overload without tissue damage, hemochromatosis, that's iron overload with tissue damage. Iron is actually very toxic. Um, if, you, if you ever get a chance to see someone who's overdosed on iron, um, it looks like they swallow like uh, sodium hydroxide. It is corrosive from the back of their um, tonsils all the way through their GI. 
um, looks like they swallow something super corrosive. And in fact, it was just they overloaded um, their ability to bind iron, and iron, free iron is, is, fairly, is very toxic. So if you saturate your TIBC, you get iron toxicity. Um, and then the final one is, is hereditary hemochromatosis, which happens in about five of a thousand people. Um, so serum iron um, decreases, it makes sense, in iron deficiency it's going to be low. Chronic inflammatory diseases, uh, you get low iron. Um, Transferrin is a negative acute phase reactant. Um, it goes up. Oral contraceptives increase a lot of binding proteins, in, including transferrin. Um, uh, if you have an acute overdose, that makes sense that your serum iron would be up. So oral contraceptives, it's, the mechanism there is increasing transferrin, which is increasing the amount of iron that's bound, um, whereas in an iron overload, or excess iron medications, um, it's actually the iron that's, that's going to be high. TIBC transferrin, um, as we said, that's, those are sort of synonymous terms. Transferrin determines TIBC, and it's really the amount of iron that can be bound to uh, these proteins, or this, prote this particular protein. Um, it decreases in, uh, in iron overload. Um, so, as we said, you know, iron overload, your body responds by dropping your transferrin because you have too much iron and you don't want to keep, on, keep a hold of it. Um, it goes up in iron deficiency, so you don't have enough iron, you upregulate transferrin to try to capture whatever iron is there. Um, percent saturation is also useful. Um, in iron excess, you're going to have a high percent saturation. In iron deficiency, you're going to have a low percent saturation. Um, ferritin is, a, is the chief storage form, and it's probably our most sensitive um, indicator of iron status. And so if we really want to know um, what's going on with ferritin, uh, what's going on with iron stores, we'll measure ferritin. Um, it is an acute phase reactant, so it goes up in viral hepatitis. Um, and so any inflammatory conditions, you get an increase of ferritin. So that can make it a little bit more confusing um, if you have inflammation going on at the same time as you have an iron deficiency. Um, so this is really sort of the take-home summary slide. If you can, you know, sort of commit this one to, to your knowledge base, it'll be very helpful in interpreting iron studies in the future. So normal person has uh, a normal transferrin about, you know, somewhere around 30, 40 percent, up to 50 percent uh, saturation. Um, so we're saying this is our iron, this is our TIBC, or this is our transferrin. If you're overloaded, the transferrin gets down-regulated, but your percent saturation is high. So we've got over 50 percent saturation. Uh, even though the serum iron might not be that high, the percent saturation is high and our transferrin is low. In iron deficiency, We've got very low saturation, you know, maybe 2 to 5 percent, something like that. Our transferrin has been upregulated, and our percent saturation is low. So a really useful summary slide for, for uh, understanding iron studies. B12, so we talked about um, iron deficiency causing uh, a microcytic anemia. In the case of B12 and folate deficiency, you get anemia, but it's a macrocytic anemia. So instead of having small red cells, you have large red cells, and that's indicated by an elevated MCV, mean corpuscular volume. And so what is the relationship between B12 and folate? So methyl tetrahydrofolate gets converted into tetrahydrofolate um, using B12. So B12 is a cofactor to form methylcobolamine. Methylcobolamine transfers its methyl group to homocysteine to form methionine, and methionine is used in DNA synthesis. And so if you don't have B12 or folate, you get decreased DNA synthesis, and, and the end result of that in red cells is that you get these big red cells that get released into circulation. So you get a, a macrocytosis um, and you get anemia. Probably a better way if you're really just concerned about B12 is to measure what we call methylmalonic acid. And so methylmalonic acid is converted into succinic acid by a B12 containing enzyme. And so if you're B12 deficient, one of the earliest indicators of B12 deficiency is 
methylmalonic acid. And so your, your MMA goes up in a deficiency of B12. And that's independent of folate. And so how do we measure B12? We can measure B12 directly. There's immunoassays for it. But in the lower end of those immunoassay ranges where you really want it to work, the assays are not very good. And so this is really sort of a biological indicator of functional B12 status. And if you get an increase of methylpalonic acid, you probably have a B12 deficiency and need supplementation or, you know, better absorption through the GI tract or, you know, IV or IM administration. So that's a quick overview of, of iron studies, B12 and folate, and I appreciate you listening in.